When Einstein and uh, people who worked with him developed the ideas of special relativity, the special theory of relativity, they began to think of the world as a four-dimensional world rather than the conventional three dimensions that we usually uh, perceive. Now in a, a one-dimensional world, one-dimensional world is, is like life on a railroad track. Once somebody has built the station house, in order to know where you are in this one-dimensional world, you have to specify one number. And, uh, you know, five miles means you're five miles down the track, or minus five miles means maybe you're five miles the other way. But one dimension requires one number to tell you where you are. A two-dimensional world, like the surface of this uh, drumhead here, um, requires two numbers to keep track of where you are. Once someone's built the station house, to know where you are in a two-dimensional world, you need to know how far this way and how far that way two numbers to specify your position. In three dimension, it requires three numbers, um, so far this way, so far that way, and, and so much altitude, for example. But in space-time, this four-dimensional world, Einstein and, and others who worked with it uh, added a fourth dimension, which was proportional to time. And in this four-dimensional world, um, you needed four numbers. You needed a where and a when three numbers to tell you where you were and one number to tell you when so that the points in this four-dimensional world were um, were events they were things that happened they had a where and they had a when now that was all the special theory of relativity but uh, Einstein went on to uh, to develop the ideas of special relativity and incorporate them into a more general theory called the general theory of relativity which was a theory of gravity. Now, Newton had told us a long time ago about gravity. He said that uh, objects exert forces on one another proportional to the mass of this one, the mass of that one, and the square of the distance uh, uh, between them. But in some sense, that was still uh, a mysterious thing because if you think about it very, very long, you, you begin to wonder, how does the Earth over here know that the moon 250,000 miles away is, is even there, let alone that it exerts a force on the Earth. Well, Einstein provided an answer to that question. Um, and it had to do with this uh, idea of space-time. Let me use the, uh, this uh, drumhead here as, a, as an analog to the four-dimensional uh, space-time. But this one is just two dimensions. And this is the idea that, uh, that Einstein had to explain gravity. If you uh, had just a lone planet, say this ball bearing represents the Earth, then ordinarily that lone planet moving through space in the absence of a sun or a star in the vicinity would follow a straight line at constant speed to be uniform motion, feels no gravity. But uh, if there is a very massive planet or something like a star, like our sun. And if that mass is put into the space-time, it gives it curvature. The planet then no longer follows the straight line at constant speed. Rather, it follows the curvature of the space-time that is created by the presence of this mass. And uh, so the, uh, the, the planet, as it moves past the star, is not reacting to a force at a, at a distance, but it's reacting to the curvature of the space-time in the vicinity where it actually finds itself. Consequently, it then goes or can go into an orbit uh, around that uh, star. Well, that was the idea of um, general relativity, that the presence of matter in uh, space-time gives curvature to that space-time. Uh, science fiction uh, writers have played with that idea uh, and uh, you can see in, in recent movies examples of wormholes and uh, black holes and so forth that are consequences of the curvature of that space-time by very massive objects. People soon realized that there was a way to test this idea of Einstein that, that uh, space-time was curved by the presence of matter, such as a sun, in, in, in the space-time. 
The idea was this, light is a, a lump of mass energy. And special relativity had already uh, blurred the distinction between mass and energy and combined them into one thing, mass hyphen energy. And light represents mass energy. And so light ought to follow the curvature of space uh, just as well as, as a planet such as the Earth. And so the idea was this. If the sun were not there and uh, you looked at a star a long ways away and uh, in the absence of the presence of the sun, then you'd see the light come to your telescope uh, along a straight line. And you'd say, okay, the star is there back along that straight line. But if you put the sun uh, nearly into the path of the light, now the light follows the curvature of space-time and comes to your telescope and gives the uh, uh, impression that the star has actually shifted position because the light seems to be coming from the wrong direction because people judge where the star is by sighting back along the direction of approach of the light to their telescope. And so that uh, experiment was done as one of the early tests of general relativity. And both qualitatively and quantitatively, the uh, prediction of general relativity was borne out by these experiments. They were done during an eclipse so that the, the direct light from the sun was blocked out by the eclipse. And then people looked at the light arriving from a distant star to see whether it had, it had followed a curved path as Einstein had predicted, and it did.